Hey gang, welcome to more adventures with Dr. Chaos, the Mad Fiber Artist. First, coffee. Now, I'm going to have to get my dye room fixed up so I can stop shitting in the kitchen, because watch this. You see the lighting now, right? Watch. Darkness falls. But then the sun emerges once I've had my coffee. <laughs> I'm entertained by the smallest things. <laughs> so what we're doing today, I have here a Gotland BFL cross and we're going to be washing this up and then we're going to spin with it. Now I got this fleece. If you did not see me unboxing this, you need to because I lost my mind. I mean, literally lost my mind these fleeces are gorgeous look at this look at Ooh. so today we're working with lewis weather ram lamb weather lamb weather lamb there we go um so lou is 81 percent gotland the sire is 62 percent gotland and the rest of them is bfl so this fella is 70, almost 72% Gotland, and it's gorgeous and silky, and there's so many tones of gray in here. It's gorgeous. So I've got, as you could hear, my kettle whistling. I have my water boiling. I am going to get this into the pot with some unicorn power scour, and we're going to clean this up. All right, I'll switch you around. All right, here is our hot water. My power scour in its pretty jar. I just like pretty things. Now it is um, a relatively high lanolin fleece, so we're gonna use a full half tablespoon and a gallon of water. What I do is I do uh, for a 12 cups of water, as hot as I can get it from the tap, and four cups of boiled water. And that makes a good temperature for scouring fleece. Now here we go. The Lou Weather is going into the pot. Now you can see there is just a little bit of veggie matter in here, but overall it's very, very clean. And the color is just amazing. All right. Got that all sunk. So there's just a hundred grams here. And I'm gonna try and contain myself once it's washed and let it dry completely and then weigh it again to see what we lose. I'm going to set this to soak. Hey Google. Set a timer for 15 minutes. All right, so we'll let this soak for 15 minutes and I'll bring you back for the second wash. See you in a bit. First bath is done. Got our hot water up for our second bath. I love these bottles. Look how pretty they are. All right, so here's our fleece after our first bath. I meant to save some water to show you all the dirt that came out of it, but I forgot. I get doing stuff and I forget to film, but it is coming out in all these tones of gray. So pretty. All right, in it goes. Get in there. No, no, no. Yes, get in there. <laughs> I think I spend too much time alone, guys. I entertain myself. All right, we're gonna let this cook. Hey Google, I'm gonna let that cook for a little bit and we'll be back. All right, here we go. All washed and rinsed and beautiful. Look at the shades of gray in this baby. So pretty. So I'm going to wrap it up, hang it to dry 
And when it is dry, we're gonna play. I want to lock spin some of this because it is gorgeous. So we will let it dry. I'm gonna let it fully dry. It's probably gonna hurt me to do so, but I'm going to leave it alone and let it fully dry so we can get a post washing measurement on it. All right, we have our fiber dry. So we started with 100 grams. And we are down to 82 grams. So we lost 10, 18 grams in the wash. That's not too bad. So here is how it looks dried up. Put it in the sunshine for you. It is so pretty. Now I'm going to take some of this and dye it because I think the colors are going to be amazing. I just can't decide if I want to dye it pre-spin or post-spin. But what I'm going to do right now is we're going to separate out some to lock spin. We're going to comb some. I don't think I want to card this because the locks are just too pretty. I don't know if carding... Eh, well, we'll try it. The whole point is to experiment, right? But this is so soft. So, I'm going to pick through. Like, look at those curls. They're just freaking amazing. Some of them are super long. There's a little bit of veggie matter. We'll pluck that out. So I will parcel this out. We'll put some for dyeing, some for lock spinning, some for combing, and we'll see what we end up with. And then we'll do some test spins because this is, it's so pretty. I just want to lock spin it all to keep that pretty lock structure. But for experiments, I do have more. So for this one, we'll just experiment with all of it. And then I can wash up more later when I decide what I like the best. Although I'm guessing it's going to be lock spun. <laughs> we know how Dr. Chaos likes her fiber. All right, we'll see you in a bit. So we have some amethyst purple. We have our locks. I just saw a piece of veggie matter. I'm just going to pick that out. And you can see how they have, maybe you can, if I can get it to the camera. There we go. There's brown tips on the lock, which are going to take the dye differently. But I still think this is going to make a super exciting color. You can see how there's light grays and dark grays and some browns. And it's going to make the dye so tonal. So here's our hot water. I've already added some uh, apple cider vinegar to the mix. Now it's going in dry, so that's going to change how the dye takes as well. Hold on, got to grab my tongies. And we're going to push that down. Now, I just grabbed a handful of fiber. I didn't actually weigh it out to see how much is there. But I did to use a lot of dye because I want to get a very deep color on this. And as it's gray, it needs a lot of color to show. There we go. Got it all plunged underneath. Now I'm going to add a little more apple cider vinegar. I'm finding the apple cider vinegar takes actually takes a lot to work as an acid. But you can see it's how the tonal purple 
is taking on the fiber, which is really cool. So I'm going to let that sit and cool to exhaust and we will see how the color looks when we are done. And now you can see why I threw down a towel because I just splashed dye water everywhere. The color is starting to absorb so I will let that sit, quit poking at it so I don't uh, felt it, and we're going to go play with the other fiber while this dye sets. I have some dried locks here. I'm going to grab my mini combs and we're going to comb it up. I really got to address my tines on these because I've got them all bent out of shape. But for the time being, I'm just going to comb some fiber. This is so soft and silky, guys. It is just a beautiful fleece. Now, this one is a lamb fleece, so I wouldn't be surprised if it had some milk tips on it, but we shall see. And there's like so little veggie matter in this. It's just a beautiful, beautiful fleece. That's enough to start with. Now, because I'm working with a dried fleece, I do have a little spritzy bottle of water here nearby so that I can uh, spritz for static. And because it's winter, everything has static. You should see my poor kitty cats. I go to pet them and it's just like <laughs> electrocute them. There's no nose booping at this time of the year because that shocks them right on the end of their noses. Poor little babies. Oh, this just opens right up beautifully. Look how fluffy it gets. Woohoo. All right, so there's what came out and you can see there's like one piece of veggie matter in that. I'm going to reuse that fiber, no worries. I'm just going to give it a spritz to kind of control that static. Oh, this is so beautiful, guys. So beautiful. And this is why you don't load a whole lot of fiber onto your combs because once you start combing it, it floofs up so much that it'll just fall right off your combs. But you can see how all the shades of gray are blending and merging. And it's so pretty. All right. Oh, <laughs> it's so soft. It's just like a Oh, like a cloud of velvet. It's beautiful. I'm pulling very, very carefully here so I don't just tear the roving apart because it's just gliding off those combs. Oh, it's beautiful. This is so soft. It's just amazing. All right, there we go. I'll just twist this up into a nest. It just wants to drift apart. It's so soft and light. But see how the grays trying to block the sunshine so it can focus a little better but the grays have all melded together into this beautiful heathered look so I'm curious to see once we spin that if we dye it afterwards what it would look like now I am going to card some of it not that I want to but because you know experiments so I have this stuff that came off my combs I'm gonna card that one second I'm gonna grab my hand cards so as usual I did not clean my cards 
I've really got to learn to just like clean my tools before I put them away. But I just get on to the next thing and I forget to do it. This is seriously like the best tool I have ever purchased. It just does a brilliant job of cleaning. All right. So we have a little bit of fleece that came off the cones. So we're just going to load that on. I'm going to cart up a roll leg with it. Oh, it's so pretty. And all these feathered grays. Oh. I love gray. Gray is like, you can do so much with it. You can use it as is. You can dye it. Like, it's so beautiful. And when you dye gray, you get a metallic sheen to it that's just gorgeous. All right. There's one fluffy roll egg. I'm going to make another one. And there's another fluffy roll egg. So we got some roll eggs. We've got some top. And we got a handful of locks for lock spinning. I'm going to grab my wheel. And we'll give this a go. And see how it turns out. I might even try flicking from the locks at the wheel. We'll see how I feel. How ambitious I feel. Back in a sec. All right, here we have our little nest of combed top. We're going to spin that first. So I'm just going to charge my leader, get my uptake adjusted. I think that's good. This spins nice and fine, drafts like a dream, and the color is amazing. This is so, so soft and silky. Let's just do a ply back sample here. Look at how pretty that is. It's just gorgeous. And I have just enough twist in there. So we'll finish up this sample. This is so soft and silky. I could spin this all day. It's just gorgeous. Oh, caught the tail of my nest. That's all right. I'll just straighten it as I go. This is just like a buttery soft spin. It's so easy. It's delightful. It really is. My posture is horrible. I need to sit up straighter. There we go. All right. So that's our combed top. Next, I'm just going to adjust my wheel. I'm going to spin my locks. And then I will do my roll eggs last. So I'm just going to take these and I'm just going to take a handful and just fluff them. Now 
I should have done this on my plying head rather than on my little one because it's probably going to catch, but I will deal. All right. We got a little bit of picked locks here. Started, and then I'm just gonna coreless core spin with these locks. So we're gonna get a highly textured chaos yarn. Which as we all know, I totally adore. As I suspected, it has reached the point where it's not going to feed onto the bobbin. So I'm just going to hand wind it. Okay, all my locks are secure. So there's a little bit of lock spun. I'm just doing small samples here. And I'm going to grab my fluffy little Rolex. And I'm going to spin a sample of those. All right, let's get this on. Increase. Oh yeah, this just wants to drift. There we go. Get some twist in there. We're getting a lovely halo. And that halo is so soft. There will be no itch in this. I can't imagine there'll be itch in this because it is just, it's so soft. But we are getting that lovely halo. I do like a good halo. And we're doing the fried draw. <laughs> what I'm going to call this now, this uh, short long draw. I'm calling it Fred. He has a name. Don't ask me why. Just, I love the chaos of it all. Now, I've been trying to become a little more active because obviously spinning is a very sedentary pastime. So I've been doing my ring fit workout with my switch and while it is fun, it it's a workout. I'm definitely feeling it today. So I think I will take a break today and then I will do a workout again tomorrow because like, wow, I'm sore and I do have some snow to move. So I should save my energy for that. It's funny. It was plus six and raining two nights ago now it's minus 15 and it snowed god love winter in canada it's literally don't like the weather wait a day it'll change all right so that's the fred draw i'm just gonna add some extra 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 twist fold it back on itself let it through the orifice now we're gonna do a chain ply with this and see what we end up with hold on i forgot my lazy cape one second I always have to put my lazy Kate up because Bobo loves to just spin the bobbins. I wonder if that's where Bobo came from. <laughs> so I have to put it up so he doesn't eat all my leaders. Not so much because I'm worried about my leaders, but because I'm worried about him getting fiber stuck in his belly. 
So this would be our fluffy roll eggs done with the Fred Draw. have a look oh that's lovely and that halo is so soft all right let's keep going all right we're coming up on our lock spun now, I don't want to ply or lose much twist on my lock spun here. So I'm just going to crank up my tension and just feed that really quick. There. So we fed that on. So we're ready to chain ply again. Oops, I better loosen that up a little bit. All right. So even the worsted sample has a bit of a halo to it. Now, granted, I didn't spin it for ultimate smoothness because honestly, I'm just loving how soft and delicious this fiber is. I don't know if you can call fiber delicious, but I would call this delicious and it's strong. Holy, I had a hard time breaking that. All right. I am not in the end, so it can't escape. And we'll have a look. And that's our worsted spun. It does have really good definition despite the halo. I'm not calling it hairy, it's a halo. And we'll ply that back on itself. Now let's just pull this off the wheel. So, it is so silky that the lock spun just drifts apart. So, it would definitely have to be plied, and I would use a thread to do that. Or grab my bulky bobbin and uh, ply it back on itself. So, here is woolen versus, versus worsted. I've been up since 5.30. I'm not having a good day talking. You really can't see much of a difference between the two. So, woolen would probably be a better way to spin it to preserve the extra warmth benefits since spinning it worsted doesn't preserve that shine. Although worsted with the halo would be nice and warm and would wear better. So I guess it really depends on what you want your end product to be. But I do love how this looks. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this little sample. We're going to go pop it in our die cup so that you can see the difference between dyeing in the lock form and dyeing as a yarn. So I'm going to go get that in the die and I will show you the results later. All right, we're going handheld so you can see all the different tones of purple on this fleece. You can see we have these light tones here, then these pinky tones here. And it's just absolutely divine. And the brown tips look like they're staying a lot darker. So pretty much this lock has all the tones. So you can see from the base 
to the tip. They're just, the locks came out absolutely gorgeous. Now they're going to lighten up a bit as it dries, but we're still going to get all those tones and it's going to be so pretty. All right, I'm going to set it out to dry. So some more handheld. My original dye bath had exhausted by the time I got back to it, which is great. But that meant that to do the second batch, I just threw in the yarn I spun. And here's the colors it came out as. So I threw in a bunch more locks. So you can see the difference between the spun and the locks. Now when it's dry, we will spin this up as well. So then we can compare this to this and see the difference between dyeing in lock form and dyeing as yarn. Because there will be a difference, maybe not much of one, but there will be a difference. So when this is dry, I'll be back. So here is our spun, then dyed yarn. And this is our dyed then spun yarn. Now these were dyed in the exact same bath, but you can see how tonally they're different. This one has a very even color right down to the halo. Whereas this one has a more heathered look and it's got little pops of the lighter color and shades of the darker colors. So here's the two of them side by side. So you can get a really good look at how that color is different when you dye the locks before and when you dye the yarn afterwards. Don't mind the kitty cats fighting behind me. So what I did with the locks that I had left, I had some of these and I had some of this. So these were the two dye baths. What I did I took my darker purple and I lock spun it into a single and I took my lighter purple I made a single with it to start and then I wrapped the lock spun with the single strand of this and then I just chain plied the remainder of it so there are is the darker purple lock spun it is a very strong yarn, but it is very colorful. So here's our final skein of this beautiful Gotland BFL lamp fleece. I am so pleased with how it turned out. I do have um, a good portion just chain plied in the lighter purple. Let's see if we can get this to focus here. There we go. And I just put it on the end of the lock spun. But I'm very pleased with how soft this is and how textured it turned out. Like I can put this next to my skin and it's it's beautiful. And the colors came out so divine by lock spinning it i was able to preserve those different pops of color and it made for a really really fun yarn so i'm really really delighted with how this fleece turned out it was delightful to work with it's very soft and just all around gorgeous it makes me so happy 
So that's it for today. If you like this stuff, do the stuff down below because I do stuff like this all the time. Dr. Chaos out. Bye.